Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. It is the 25th of November today and we're going to do a video on FET. So FET is the ticker for Forum Energy Technologies. So this is an oil company that you voted for. And um, yeah, just like last week you voted for uh, uranium participation. I felt I'm doing you a massive injustice by looking at this chart in isolation. Um, so it is an oil company and it does help to look at other charts so for example looking at the oil futures chart but also it helps to look at correlating markets that have a lot more history behind them and a lot more data to that we can use to do our technical analysis of because as you can see here i mean fed was founded in uh, by a merger in 2010 and here we've got our data spanning back as far as 2012 Okay, so we're quite limited. We've got about seven years of data here. Um, so I will draw what I can to analyze the chart. And you can see a few annotations. And I'm going to touch on this chart last, basically. What I want to take a look at initially is our oil futures chart. I'm going to show you my outlook on oil in general based on that chart. But also, it helps to look at correlating charts. So the chart that I've chosen is ExxonMobil. So this is a huge company within the oil industry. Uh, it's a descendant of John Rockefeller's um, Standard Oil. So a huge history behind it. There are obviously other big oil companies. We've got Chevron. Uh, we've got uh, Royal Dutch. Um, so uh, BP also. So there's lots of big oil companies out there. But ExxonMobil, a uh, huge amount of history and quite a nice chart as well that I want to show you. So, yeah, that's what we're going to look at in general. Now, as I say, let's start just with um, oil futures. So we'll pull up US oil, which is based on WTI. Um, so just bear with me. Let me find that chart. OK, so here we go. Now, I'm going to start. We're on the weekly time frame here. I'm really zooming out. We've got a lot of data on this chart. We've got going back as far as uh, 1983. OK, now you can see we started off with a nice big block of consolidation and here oil prices never really went that high, never really went above 30, you know, 30 odd dollars. Uh, and it wasn't until 2003, what happened in 2003, the US went into Iraq and price shot up and we left this block. You can see we shot up, retested the block, big bounce, but actually still part of a bear market. Interestingly, there was a huge bounce here. Yeah, and it's useful to look at it from a percentage point of view. This was a 200 and let's call it 250 percent increase. That is a huge bounce for something that's part of a downward trend. Actually, quite similar to the move in Bitcoin that I've said throughout 2019. My view is that it was a bearish bounce. Um, so I've got it labeled, as you know, as an ABC, which I know a lot of other people are looking at as a, an impulsive count because of the dramatic move. Uh, and in Bitcoin, it went up 350 percent. But what I want to illustrate here is uh, you can see here price can move upwards sharply and still be in a bear trend. You've got to look at the bigger picture. But anyway, focusing on oil, we've come down. And the big question was this looked like a very nice zigzag. And had this completed its downward move? Um, well, judging by the subsequent price action here, you would expect to see an impulsive move up. You know, if we're going to call this the completion of a correction, whether we call it an ABC, uh, which, yeah, I'd be quite happy to call it an ABC looking at it at this point. Well, then we've gone into what looks like another three wave count. For me, this is very clearly three wave-ish. So we've got our first wave up, nice running flat X wave, and then we've got a Y wave here. Okay. So if we've got a correction and then we've seen what looks like another correction following that, for me, this is looking like it wants to be a W, X, Y, X, Z and come down further. And that's why I, I do have a bearish outlook overall on oil. And I'm, I'm struggling to see in my eyes. I think it's going to start that downtrend very, very soon, in my opinion, um, because if we've seen this three wave move up here as I say this is probably our second X wave of a larger W X Y X Z let's just zoom in on this now to see how price can come down further so let's go in on the daily so this would be our 
this would be our Z wave that we're going into. And for me, this looks like our first wave down. And then we've retraced up to here. Uh, let's zoom in a bit further. So for me, this is our, yeah the first wave down, then a big correction. And what was the fib retracement of that? So very close to our 0.786. And I don't think we're going to come up higher here. I mean, there is a possibility we come up, test this upper warning line, and then roll over. But I think that this pitchfork that we've drawn here, so first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, is going to be the pitchfork that holds price trending downwards here. Already we've tested the median line, nice bounce there, corrective pattern up to the upper median line, then we've come down sharply, and we're coming up in what looks like another corrective sequence. And you can see I've drawn a, a smaller pitchfork here. If we go in on the four hourly, we can see it better. To me, this looks really, really corrective. And it looks like it wants to roll over. If we draw a fib retracement. So we're at the 0.618 and it's looking like it wants to roll over. Counting the individual waves. So it looks like a, a one, two, three. Let's make a first correction and we correct that and then it looks like another three waves up so that could be a wxy as a whole then we correct that and then we've got another three wave count up so to me this looks like it's finishing its upward move zooming in on the 15 minute it does look like it could make another push higher to be honest because that doesn't look too impulsive coming down but ultimately I think we're going to struggle to get above this upper median line. That's my view. And I think we're going to downtrend from here. And in all honesty, I think it could come down pretty hard. As I say, I'm looking, assuming out on the weekly, I think, certainly I think we can take out this low here at $42. So that's a big call, asking for oil to come below $50 because um it did really well so around here you know it really struggled to get above fifty dollars for a long time struggled with this range here it really struggled to get above it and you can see we've tested that range multiple around three times so the next time it comes down it's going to break it sharply um and the thing is i mean we've we've hit this level three times and as I say, it's coming up in a corrective manner. You know, I can't see it standing with standing any further downward pressure. So next time it comes down, I do think this $50 mark is going to break. Um, so yeah, that's my general outlook on, on oil. Uh, in terms of how far it can come down, it's, it's really difficult to say. I mean, I'd target probably first of all this low here. I'd be using this major pitchfork as guidance. But this, the top of this block at $32, that's this big block that I mentioned where the consolidation started around here. But potentially it could come down really low. Now there would have to be some massive paradigm shift for oil prices to become so weak. And obviously there are things going on in from a fundamental perspective. Obviously there's a lot of pressure with regards to uh, climate change at the moment. So, and we've got elections coming up over the next year, important elections. So a lot of campaigning might well have to incorporate the fact that we are currently experiencing record levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And oil is obviously one of the main culprits for that. Uh, we're gonna have to inevitably shift to, you know, more, um, renewable energy sources, whether it's uranium or your other conventional uh, resources of renewable energies. Then, but yeah, it looks like some action is going to have to happen. And for me, that is an excuse to bring us down, maybe, you know, into the middle of this block at around $20. It sounds hard to imagine at this point, but I do think that is something that can happen potentially. But either way, I'm not getting too excited. I, as I say, at the moment, I'm just looking at a, a move down here. I think it could be about to start this downward move. As I say, we've seen this move down. It's pretty sharp. We've seen a 0.618 retracement of that. 
And next time it comes down, we're testing that very critical $50 mark, which acts as very good resistance here. Eventually it broke up out of that. So it's a very important psychological level, that $50 mark that we've tested three times here. And I think next time it's gonna break down lower. Okay, so the reason for looking at oil is one, it's a chart that can be traded very nicely. But secondly, it gives us our bias when looking at these oil companies. So obviously this video is more about FETs, which is the chart you asked about. But now with that in mind about the general direction of oil prices, um, let's now have a look at ExxonMobil. So let's just pull up the chart. So that's this one. Now I want to zoom out on the weekly. Okay, so with ExxonMobil, so we've got data going back here as far as 1968. So we're going back a long time. Now, I can't say that this count is particularly accurate. What I can say is that we've trended nicely within this pitchfork and we've actually broken to the downside here. Okay, so we've broken out of this um, lower warning line to the downside, which is showing weakness, okay? Now, the reason I can't say this pitchfork is in keeping with an Elliott wave count, and the reason I can't say this is the, you know, the right Elliott wave count is because we don't know how far back the data goes. As I say, um, <clears throat> the, the, the data within these oil industries obviously goes back uh, much, much further. Okay, but this is one of the oil, oil charts that has long, the longest history that I can find. If you find another chart with a longer history, let me know and I'll certainly be keen to analyze that. But um, yeah, so looking at this chart, I mean, I've got a count. I've got a one, two, three, four, which looks pretty shallow. And then we go into a fifth, which looks very, very extended. But um, yeah, if we do that as a one, and that's our wave three up to the 1.618 extension. And then that fifth wave, I imagine I got it as doing a zero to three and extending it from fourth wave. Yeah, and it comes to 2.618. So the fifth wave being a 2.618 extension of wave zero to three. That's one way of looking at it. And the question is whether, in fact, this was our wave five top or this one. Because looking at it, if we zoom in on this, I mean, if we call this our fifth wave top, then you can see this, this looks like a three wave move down, three waves up, and then that's setting up to be either a regular flat with a five wave move down or an expanded flat. So this is our B wave coming up higher than the, uh, the start of the A and the C wave will come down. But the problem with the flat idea is this doesn't look five wave-ish coming down. It looks like it's coming down in a three wave count also, which makes me reconsider whether this could be in fact the top. This could be the wave five top here. Um, but again, that's a difficult call because if that's a wave five top, you'd expect this wave to be impulsive and it doesn't look so impulsive to me unless you call it some kind of ending diagonal or a, a failed uh, fifth wave. And that's why we get a kind of a double top here. But either way, as I say, we're seeing weakness in this chart in the sense that we've come down beneath this lower warning line. Okay. And it looks like it's slowly rolling over, consolidating. I do think it's, it could potentially come down in a more vertical fashion soon. That's the way it's looking to me. It looks like it wants to roll over further. Um, another important parameter to look at is the uh, simple moving averages, but on the monthly time frame. Let's not forget there's a long history behind this chart. So we're going back, as I say, to the 1960s. Now, look at the, uh, the 100 uh, month moving average that has acted as good support for a long time so here wonderful support great support here here and then it's kind of prices you can see now we're starting to see weakness price all of a sudden really came beneath the hundred for the first time here in a significant fashion and then let's just zoom in on this bit of price action so we get beneath the 100, we then retest it, bounces, manage to get above, but then we're just kind of ranging here and now we're kind of using the 100 as resistance. It's coming down and for the first time ever, it's come close to this 200 month moving average. And as I say, 
is using it here as resistance the 200 on any you know on a chart that's using these moving averages as key uh, resistance or support the 200 is the, the line that really determines a change in um, in the cycle basically so I do think this could mark a big sell-off here in oil in ExxonMobil um, that's how it looks to me now if we just look at it let's, sorry let's go on the take off the moving averages let's pull on our lines in fact let's take off the lines let's go on the linear scale we can see already on the uh, so we can see here on the on this linear scale that it's already retraced quite a lot if i was saying initially i was counting this just from an Elliott wave perspective as this being the wave five and it obviously is a big retracement we hit the point 382 but as i say this is looking like it wants to be a wave two it's looking like a big five wave count and we can expect potentially the 0.618 or the 0.5 to get tested i think more realistically maybe the 0.5 will get tested um but yeah i see this as all part of a bear trend coming down further i've got a feeling that this might be our wave five top here and we wouldn't label this as a wxy but rather an a b and this could be a c wave coming down as i say could come down to 48 dollars here to me it's looking bearish and if we zoom in on this price action let's give it let's say for example we want it to be bullish you would want to call this perhaps the low this is some kind of running um running flat let's say a running wxy yeah and actually if we look at the length of that let's do that as a fib extend it from the top here so we get a nice one-to-one -one relationship at this line where this wave is equal to this wave okay so let's say from a bullish point of view we're calling this a major bottom here with the completion of a running wxy well, the problem with this count, if we go on the daily, let's zoom in. Does this all, if that, okay, we can argue this looks impulsive, but does this look like the end of a correction or does it look like it, want it wants to come down lower? Well, first of all, if this is the end of the correction, nice big three wave count, looking very regular as a correction, it then shoots up, looking impulsive, so far so good. But what happens then? We make a new low. And then what have we done? We've come up in a three wavish count there's no way that is impulsive coming up to here which means very likely these lows are going to get taken out where if those lows get taken out very likely we're soon going to see this low get taken out and all of a sudden this no longer looks like the the bottom okay it just looks like it wants to come down further uh likely coming down lower than these lows all of a sudden you, you're approaching your 0 0.5 that's the way i see it playing out i think this is going to collapse and break down to the downside so that is basically my long-term outlook on exxon mobile i do think it's bearish and i think this downward move is pretty imminent so for me to change my mind um what would we have to see i would have to see Well, invalidation would be this high getting taken out. Because if that gets taken out, we can say this is impulsive, this is corrective, and we're now moving up. And it would take out, obviously, this downward trend line here, yeah, if we get above here. So that would be invalidation at around $83. I just don't see it happening. I, I, I think we even we're going to struggle getting above this high even. I think we're going down from here. Um, so that's Exxon Mobil. Now we can move on to FET because, as I say, FET doesn't give us as much data. Let's go on the log scale. So, FET, as I say, data from 2012. And I mean, the downward trend here starts July 2014. So, I think this is the right place we can start our downward trend and our Elliott Wave count and our um, pitchfork from 2014 because we, if we look on Exxon, uh, it was around that time, so July 2014, that we topped out. So that was the highest point of the chart, July 2014. So I think that's quite reasonable to look at FET and draw our trend from there. So just bring it on FET again. So here, basically, you can see uh, initial wave 
correction. And so that's how I've drawn my pitchfork. So first pivot, second pivot, and third pivot. And the only one that's holding price at the moment is this original pitchfork. So you can see if we sh change it to a shift or modified shift, we've already breached it to the downside. So shift clearly. Okay, at one point it was looking like the shift wanted to hold here. Very nice bounce, but then rejected at the upper, uh, lower median line and then we come down hard out of this uh, lower warning line. So that failed. Modified shift, what did that do? So that was never really significant at all. So the shift at one point was trying to hold on to this as a corrective move down to here and did reasonably well in getting price back up to here. But then you can see the bears stepped in and turn this into an impulsive pitchfork using the original pitchfork and all of a sudden we can now start thinking about targeting our lower warning line as the first point of a potential level of support but as I say it could come down a lot lower than this so I've drawn this 0 0.55 target based on uh, a fib okay so if we do our fib extension using this wave and extending it from here this is the fib extension that you get and the 2.618 would be the next one to target because the 1.618 has been obliterated and that sits at 0 0.55 so that's the next place I'd be looking for support but as I say ExxonMobil looks like it's got a lot more downside to go as with oil and so this could very well we may see a little bit of a bounce at the 2.618 which might turn it into some kind of a, a WXY X, Z coming down further, something like that. But ultimately, I am bearish here on oil in general, FET also. But could we see, we are seeing a little bit of a move up here at the present. Um, but yeah, I'd keep an eye out for this uh, up, uh, lower median line here as a potential resistance level. It's not a chart I'd like tr to trade. I'd, I'd look for resistance levels on ExxonMobil just because you've got no history here. We've got no history as to what happened prior to 2012. Um, so that is what we really need to identify horizontal levels of resistance and support, uh, prior consolidation levels, order blocks. Uh, it really does help to have that data. So ExxonMobil would be the benchmark that I was using, would be using if I was trading FET. Uh, here, you can argue we are at a horizontal level here based on this low here but I can't see a correction suddenly ending like that I think it may come down go a bit higher and then roll over but yeah I'm hoping this has been of interest to you to look at oil on the bigger picture as I say I'm making a big call here in saying that oil is looking really weak and that it could get absolutely battered to the downside so um, I know that's um, a rather bold call and it could be completely wrong but at the moment that is what I'm seeing in these charts and as I say there is a fundamental um, correlation that we could see in the sense that there is gonna have to be some change in the way that we're burning these fossil fuels it can't continue as I say we are now at record levels uh, a lot more people are kicking up a fuss about these this pollution and um, yeah there are other means of creating energy we have those other means we've got uranium which is probably going to end up getting utilized so yeah I think that pretty much summarizes everything I want to say any queries um, as I say yeah just put them in the the cryptology channel and we discuss those further so I hope this has been of help I think we'll wrap it up there guys all right take care